as I'm preparing for spinsterhood and um, and for for just having leading my life by myself and growing old graciously, I'm going to take up a new hobby. So I went through the range of hobbies and bird watching wasn't really my thing and you know hiking it was just seemed like way too much work so eventually i took up photography i found a photography class quite close to my house that i could do in the evenings and the lecturer um <clears throat> who later became a really good friend of, of of me and and johans the lecturer said to me he's quite old so i better take the course quickly before he dies um so i enrolled for this course and um i needed some photography equipment and uh, my lecturer, Xian Sili, referred me to Johan. So I bought some equipment from Johan. And then subsequently, there was problems with the equipment that I bought from him. And I needed a little bit more support. So he had to make a house call. And, you know, eventually he moderated our photography uh, exhibition. So that's, that's really how I met Johan. Now, um, he's a very, very humble guy, um, and he doesn't boast about his photography skills, but he certainly, I know everything I, I've learned about photography. I've learned from him. I think he's an absolute brilliant photographer. Um, he is, you know, the brand love photographer, and he makes us as a team just look amazing. And, and not, I wouldn't say he makes us look younger, but he makes us look true to ourselves. Um, and that's really what I really deeply appreciate about Johan is that he makes us look true to ourselves. Um, and he makes that little discomfort of having a lens in your face. It just makes it so much better. All right. So without further getting all emotional and sharing with you exactly what that first support call to fix my equipment entailed, <laughs> I'm going to hand over to Johan. Um, I'm going to ask you to chat, uh, to put some questions in the chat box. I'm going to watch that. But I think Johan's prepared a lovely presentation for us today. Um, and I really want to um, uh, commend him on what he's put together for us. And ultimately, the objective of this presentation is that so, so we can feel more comfortable in this online world, that we can feel a little bit more true to ourselves by using our equipment in the right way. All right, Johan, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to hand over to you. Hi. Well, thank you, Chantal. A little bit embarrassing there, I think, but <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so before we start, I, I just need to put in a couple of disclaimers. So um, this, this is my world normally. I'm, I'm a stall photographer. Um, and I love stall photography. Uh, videography is is sort of new to me as well but i i still think i can share some some basic tips with you to, to make what we go through now a little bit better and, and uh, more professional um so i don't know everything there is to know about uh, videography um i do know everything there is to know about photography but <laughs> um so uh, I want to use this opportunity to learn with you as well. So I'm going to share practical things from a, from a photographer's point of view that I think can, can really help you. Um, I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. So I'm going to do a little bit more of a presentation with you guys. Um, I'm struggling a little bit because I did it in Keynote and Keynote is giving us a little bit of problems on, on Zoom at the moment. So if things go a little bit haywire, just, just bear with me. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Chantal, can you see okay? Yes, perfect. Showing the right slides. Okay, um, so I, I want to welcome everybody for taking the time um, to join me. Um, and today I think uh, we want to talk a little bit about basics, basic know-how on how to uh, use the equipment that we've got um, in a more better way or more professional way to, to help us with video conferencing. And, and if we need to uh, produce content for, for whatever purpose that might be. Um, 
So just another disclaimer, um, I'm a total Apple addict. Um, so I speak for Apple mostly if I, if I talk about things. Um, uh, the people on Android, um, I, I really feel for you. <laughs> um, so I invite you to, to just go and check where those settings are on, on your equipment. Um, I, I haven't touched a, a PC in over 10 years, and I haven't ever in my life touched an Android phone. So, um, but the settings must be there. You just need to, to find out where to, where to find it on your, on your specific devices. Okay, so uh, very quickly, um, the agenda we're going to run through um, is just a little bit what, what is this world of remote work that we find ourselves in at the moment. Um, then I want to share my triangle for success, the three things I think is key to produce better video, whether it is for, for content production or whether it is on, on a, a Zoom uh, call or a other video conferencing call. Um, then we're going to look at a couple of tips specifically for Zoom, um, and then we'll move over to smartphone video recording and look at a couple of tips there. And if time allows us, uh, we can talk a little bit about accessories, um, and then I'll open, I'll open the, the floor for, for questions that you might have. Okay. So uh, I think this coronavirus caught everybody off guard. Um, uh, this was the world basically stole January in, in South Africa. Uh, our wor wor worst nightmares was to get the snooze button on unsmooths that we can actually wake up for work. Um, our headache was to take dogs out in the morning to decide what to wear to go and sit in traffic and then enter the office space. Um, and all of a sudden that changed literally overnight um, in, in South Africa and I suspect in most other countries as well. So now we find ourselves in a, in a post uh, virus world and our new challenges and headaches are, um, it sucks inside, we cannot go outside. Um, um, shut up has become my main uh, language in my house. I share the house with three children um, and I constantly have to shout to them um, to just keep quiet while, while I'm busy. Um, then, yeah, what the fuck? What is a mic? What is a video? What is a recording? Um, all of a sudden, our employees uh, are asking many new things from us. Um, so we, we might be asked to create online content. We, and most people probably don't have a clue what it means or what it entails. Um, but this is our world now. Um, and then I think one of the biggest um, statements I hear is that this is my PC or this is my phone. It is not a camera. Um, so I want to I want to try and help you guys uh, with practical solutions to, to sort some of these issues uh, issues out for us. Um, so if we can move to to what I call my triangle for success, the three things that I think is most important to get this right. Then the first one is the lens. Um, it doesn't matter if we're sitting on a laptop or we're sitting on a phone or a iPad or a tablet or a desktop. Uh, we, we need some kind of lens and there's some things to consider around the lens in general. So that, that is my first uh, sort of uh, corner of, of my triangle. Then I think light and the use of light is key. Um, if we can figure out what happens with light when we on a video, uh, busy recording or on a call, then, then we can try and figure that out and, and fix it um, also uh, more practically. Um, then angle, um, I don't want to get too, too much bogged down in theory, but I'll quickly give you a couple of pointers about the angle. And the angle is just, you know, where are we looking and where's the lens looking? Um, so we'll, we'll look at that. Um, so if we can cope with these three things, I think we, we are, 80% there, 
to get better quality on whatever we need to do with our video. Um, but I want to add one thing in, and uh, I want to add some support in. Um, so the world, especially the world of a smartphone uh, as a camera, gets somewhat better if we can find a way to stabilize um, our phone, that it sits still, that it's not in our hand, it's not moving with us. Um, so we'll look a little bit at, at the support side of the triangle as well. Okay, so if we can move to Zoom. Um, and I think the same will apply for, for any of the other platforms uh, that we use for video conferencing. will definitely work for Skype, um, Google Hangouts, and, and so on. Um, so again, you know, typically in the pre-COVID-19 world, we used our laptops for, for actual work, to send emails, to um, write reports, to run software, whatever the case might be. Um, uh, in most corporates, uh, if you had to go on to a, a video call, you went into a conference room that was set up for you um, with very fancy um, conferencing equipment in that room. Um, so. Again, people might say, this is my laptop or my phone. It's definitely not a conference room. Um, but I want to I wanna pose it to you that, oh, but it is. Um, we were sitting every day from, from basically two weeks ago during our workshop that we run, um, our team meetings. Everything is now happening in, in the conference room, which is now our phone or our laptop or our desktop. Um, so the devices are capable to be used for, for this application and, uh, and how good we use them just depends on our know-how about basic things. So if we can um, start looking at some of the, the tips I wanna share with you. Um, so the first one for me um, is find the lens. And I, I know this sounds very, very basic now, um, but there's many lenses on, especially a, a smartphone, and finding the lenses on the front side is not always that easy. Um, even on a laptop, uh, desktop, um, they, they're sometimes a little bit hidden. So um, that's following the sketch that I'm sharing with you on, on the laptops and desktops. There's usually, if you look closely, there's a little shiny glass bit on, on the top border and, and the lens is usually hidden within that. Um, on our phones, especially when we, we look at the front lens um, and the front lens is very important when we video call because we need to see what's going on. So we cannot use the back lens. And the front lens is usually also there on top, um, very well hidden. We don't, don't normally see them as a lens. Um, and then uh, something like a webcam, uh, it's a little bit more obvious. So at the moment, I'm, I'm sitting on a, on a, uh, a Logitech, the exact same model uh, that I've got in a picture. So I'm using a webcam, um, which, which just makes it more easier for me to spot the lens. Um, so why is it important to know where the lens is? <clears throat> and I think there's two things for me. Uh, the first thing is we need to clean the lens. Um, so we need to find it to be able to clean it. Um, we sometimes neglect to do this, but we must remember that the phone is actually a phone. We, we carry the things around, we use it, we touch it probably a hundred or a thousand times a day. And every time we touch it, we, we deposit some, some uh, oils from our skin onto, onto the various parts of the phone. And if that comes um, in contact with the lens, it is going to blur the image and the quality. Um, uh, the second reason why we need to know where the lens is, is when we start talking about the angles, um, that we can actually position ourselves better um, according to the position of the lens. So let's move to the second step, which is about the angles, so getting the angle right. Um, just sitting on, on Zooms for, as I said, for the last two weeks, this has been my life. I um, spent probably 
four to five hours a day in in some kind of zoom zoom call and uh, for me it's always interesting to, to, to look at what's going wrong on the people on the other side so the first thing that goes wrong is that um we we normally see a very high angle um and it will produce an image um, like the one shown on the screen um so that means that the, the laptop is flipped um either down and it's the, the camera is lens is actually facing down on us. Um, uh, so the, the high angle is, is definitely a, a problem. Um, likewise, the, the, the low angle when, when the camera is facing up at us. So that is typically with, with a laptop when the screen is tilted further to the back, then, then the camera moves with the, the, the screen. And we typically get um, angles that's either showing down on us or up at us, like the like the previous one. Um, now we can still see the person, but this is not ideal. Um, it is, uh, especially on the down angle, I find it quite disturbing because it shows quite a lot of the chaos that's going around us in the room. We see things that we don't typically want to show people. Um, and with the, the high angle, we sometimes not in the screen fully. Um, our, our heads get cut off at the bottom. And then we start seeing ceilings and, and walls and, and also quite a lot of things that might be disturbing during a, during a video call. So the ideal that we want to aim at is, is to get our lens at the same level as our eyes. So depending on where we sit um, and what we use, but we need to, um, might need to raise the, the, the device on, on a platform of some kind. You can put down a box or a suitcase or whatever, just to get the device higher. So that the lens where I showed you uh, on, on the various images where it might sit, that that lens is more or less at the same height as your eyes. Um, that will give you an eye level view um, and you will get an angle like the one I'm showing you now, which is there's no distortion on the face. The face is not bigger or smaller in certain parts. Um, and uh, you, you're covering a, most of the, of the frame. Um, so definitely tip number two, get the device, the lens of the device at the same height as, as what you are sitting. Okay. Um, this becomes a problem when we sit on a, on a bed, for instance, with a laptop, because if the camera has to face up at us then, but then we start seeing all the other angles and, and things and, and so on. So the ideal, you have to sit at some kind of a desk, uh, preferably, um, if you need to lift your laptop up, put it on something higher, that, that the screen goes higher up. Um, then with, with that, if we get the lens at the same uh, height as our eyes, then we need to make sure that the, the angle is correct, that our screen is actually, or the device is then at a 90 degree angle um, with us. Because again, even, if we are on the same height, if the lens is showing down or up, we are we are changing the angle and we are distorting distorting the view that we we're looking at. Okay. Um, so that sounds more technical than what it really is. Um, get get the lens on the same height as your eyes, and get it at a ninety degree angle that it doesn't tilt up or down. Um, and your your view will look like that, which is what we want. A normal face position in the middle of the screen. Um, so Hank, can, I, can I quickly interrupt you? I just want to want to quickly say, um, so my setup at the moment is that my laptop is slightly raised. I have a conference camera lens above it, but I do want to say to the to the audience that if you raise your laptop you might start having posture issues. So don't try and type on your laptop on a, on a raised box. What I've got is I've got, a, I've got a laptop, but I've got a keyboard. So just um, make sure that you adapt your setup, maybe for while you're on Zoom, 
and then just adapt it so that you know the time that you sit that you don't start having posture issues and back ache issues okay right. right, can i carry on um so tip number three is is getting the light better um and i think this is this is the key one um this is the biggest problem i'm seeing with most uh, conference calls I'm on is that people are, are sitting in, in totally the wrong um, light conditions or lighting conditions. Um, the simplest and the best light you can find is to sit in front of a window. Um, it works beautifully. Um, just be careful that uh, there's no direct sun coming in uh, through the window um, because that casts very harsh uh, shadows and stuff on your face. Um, and it's also going to blind you. Um, so you're going to squint and people will see that squint. But if you've got like a, um, now in South Africa, a cell-facing window away from the sun um, in the Northern Hemisphere, if you've got the, um, uh, the opposite of where the sun is coming from, um, th that, that is usually ideal. Um, it's usually soft, beautiful light that's coming in um if there's direct sun hitting the window it's not a problem if you can draw the blinds or the curtains um but obviously we don't want to block out all the light so it mustn't be full block out material um so the setup that i'm showing you there that that is a perfect perfect zoom call setup um if you can sit in that chair um, at that desk with that kind of window light um you're going to look like a model on on uh, on your calls. Um, so just as an illustration, um, so I quickly took these two shots of Chantal yesterday. Um, she's sitting in front of a window, like in the the picture I showed you, but that there is direct sun hitting the the, the window, as you can see. Um, she's got a, a roll down blind. I think it's a. a 55% um, uh, shade or something like that, doesn't matter. But you can actually see the sun hitting the, the blind. Um, but the, the image on the right shows you what what the shot looked like from that angle. From And that's perfect. I mean, there's no shadows. Um, uh, light is nice and clean, and it's even. Um, it's well lit. Um, if, if the background goes a little bit darker, that is actually even better because it focuses, uh, it focuses the, the viewer on, on you, uh, the person who's speaking. So um, definitely a window light, if you have a spot um, in your house, and I'm sure you must have, because most houses has got three or four sides, um, you will be able to find a beautiful spot. And even if you do a makeshift little desk, just for your video conferencing calls, that that will be super. Um, yeah, if, can I can I quickly can I quickly just before we move on from the window, just say something. So I think again, if you've got a window with direct sunlight, you could take just a white sheet um, and yeah. just out that window. I want to quickly just show you, Jan, if I may, um, just the example. If I draw my blind up, um, I just want you to see what happens. You can see my. My, um, my background is slightly darker. Now when I open my blind, you can see the sun is, is um, now it's got this weird kind of halo effect and the sun is very bright and it's actually reflecting up from my, um, from my, from my laptop's um, surface. So that's not an ideal, the, the picture just looks fuzzy. Um, whereas the difference when I close the blind you can see a very different result. Okay. Um, yeah, so while, while we're in that, um, in the video uh, mode, I, I just want to show you. So I'm sitting in a, where the light is behind me. Um, my office stands up a window facing, facing me. Um, so I'm using artificial light, which I'll show you now. So I just want to show you what will happen if I switch my light off. 
Okay, which is still not bad because the, the cameras in the or the software running most of the devices um, can handle the, the change in light. So the image is still not bad. Um, it, 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 it's still usable, but it's not ideal. Um, so if I switch on my lights again, um, so I'm just separating a little bit better from the background, which, which just puts the focus on me again. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, okay, so what you're seeing now, this, this is my, my setup that I'm using. And um, what's sitting behind my, my MacBook or my iMac is, is a ring light. Um, a ring lights uh, basically comes from the, the modeling world. Um, it's the same lights that makeup artists use to, to make up people and they, and they do makeovers and things. Um, and it started gaining popularity in photography um, about probably 10 years ago or so. And the reason is, is that a ring light just eliminates all, all kinds of shadows. Um, you will never see a shadow if, if you use a ring light. Um, and uh, these days you can pick them up very, very cheap. Um, the China, China produces these things at an enormous uh, scale and ring lights has really become quite affordable. Um, I think the problem at this stage is, is that um, it's very difficult to get things delivered. Um, in South Africa, like a lot is shut down, so that they're, they're taking orders, but you you won't be able to to uh, get the equipment in uh, if you don't own it already. Um, guys in America, I think Amazon is probably still still delivering, um, and in Europe, parts in Europe, um, you can always try and order a ring light. Um, and if you want to chat with me offline about uh, what you need, um, we can we can take it offline. But this, this is my setup. So I'm, I'm using a, a webcam. Um, so I'm, I'm not on my computer's camera. Um, and the beauty with the webcam is just that I, I got built in uh, microphones. Um, so the speech you're hearing is coming through the camera at the moment, also not through the, through the computer. And then I'm using an artificial light source. Um, but there's, there's other things you can you can really use. Um, so again, if we don't have a, a window facing you, um, try and get a white wall that reflects back on you. Um, you can put a, uh, any uh, bed lamp and shine it on the wall and let it reflect back on you. You can you, there's really many things you can can do to to mimic better light. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's really not that complicated. You just need to experiment and, and play around with, with what you've got. Um, okay. Um, then another thing I'm seeing, and I'm calling it uh, deciphering the hieroglyphics. Um, and that is to mirror or not to mirror. Um, I, I, I've... I've seen this many times when people's t-shirts look very funny. Um, and the reason is that a lot of the laptops or cameras, they, they flip the view around. Um, so they're giving you a mirror image, um, mostly on the front cameras. Um, the Apple's devices, they typically turn it around on their own. Um, but if your device swaps it around like the image uh, that I'm showing you, um, you can go into the zoom settings um, and uh, under a video, there is a little button that you can tick uh, to mirror my, my video. If you tick that, it will swap it around and uh, it, will, it will turn the, uh, the, the mirrored image back into an image like uh, somebody is viewing you. So that's a very nice tip. Um, so again, if you're not using Zoom, um, I'm sure Skype or Google, they must have a similar setting. Um, if, if it turns a, it around by accident, just find that setting and, and uh, tick that if you have that option to turn it around. Um, the easiest way to test it is to 
um, just write something on a piece of paper and hold it up on your screen and see, can you read it or not? Um, then you know it's mirrored or, or it's not mirrored. Okay. Um, a little bit uh, off the camera and the equipment side, um, I think another important tip for me is to watch the background. Um, uh, we need to choose a spot with a clean background or use a, a, a virtual one. Um, so I know we're sitting in our houses, uh, there's children, we're sharing our houses with our spouses and partners and husbands and wives and children. Um, but really, we try and find a clean spot, a spot that you can dedicate um, and just check what is behind you. I mean, people don't only see your face, they do see everything going on in the, in, in, in the background behind you. Um, so Zoom has started incorporating uh, on their latest versions, a virtual background, um, which is also a setting um, that you can tick on, you can upload images. I've got a couple preloaded for you. And then you can turn your background in something looking like this. Um, so it just projects an image behind you and it just takes care of whatever is sitting in, in, uh, in the back. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing um, blog posts about how people are having fun with this, you know, they get very creative with the backgrounds they use in meetings and, and try and bring some humor um, into this whole COVID working from home world. But that's a very nice place. Again, if you're stuck in a very small apartment and you really don't have um, a lot of mobility or the ability to move stuff around, then this is a very simple solution to choose a virtual background and just project it behind you. Um, okay, then, uh, Tip number six, um, uh, mute and stop. And this will keep you out of the shit, <laughs> literally. Um, so remember, you can mute your sound. Um, it's not always um, done by the host. Um, on this call, I think Chantal, uh, she, she's got the ability to, to mute um, the, the people on the call as well and unmute them but you also have that ability. So remember to stop sounds. If children are shouting or screaming in the background, just mute yourself um, and stop video if you can. Um, sometimes you don't want to see people uh, or let people see what you're busy with. So I found this little video clip, it went viral. Um, it's really funny. So just watch the spot um, in the red circle and I hope the sound plays. Um, and in reality, I've heard that social work kind of has very high standards and and like <laughs> like good standards in terms of things, and that oftentimes people don't like people of other professions don't have. <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> what happened? I saw nothing. <sighs> Oh my God, Jennifer. <laughs> what happened? Nothing, keep going. Okay. Um, yeah, so life will happen um, and there's nothing wrong with it, but just remember to mute the sound and to stop the video um, if life happens. Um, unless you want to become, become famous overnight like uh, Jennifer here. Which was quite funny. Um, so that is that is my six steps for for Zoom. Um, I, I hope you can find value in, in in some of them and and try and apply some of them to get your video conferencing calls a little bit more professional. Um, uh, I think most companies are very relaxed and lenient, um, and I don't mind so much what's going on in the background. Um, but I, depending on who your clients are, I think we, we still need to uh, exercise some level of professionalism. And uh, by doing these six things, um, the video conferencing will just look a little bit more professional. Um, if we can move on to the, to the, the phones now, the smartphone side of things. And, um, uh, and again, uh, there's amazing 
cameras built into our smartphones. Um, and uh, there's a few things that we can consider from a video perspective to, to get video recording um, of content and, and, um, uh, and actual clips much better. So uh, Chase Jarvis, um, and this guy I'm, I've been following for many years, is seen as sort of a, a master in the world of iPhone photography. Um, and he, he has got this famous statement that says that the best camera is the one you have with you. Um, I, I truly agree with that. Um, as a photographer of 25 years, um, my love has always been document, documentary photography. And in the world of, of photojournalism, getting, getting the image is, is much better than getting quality, if you know what I mean. So whatever you've got with you, um, even if it's the worst little camera or the worst phone, um, as long as it can produce some kind of image or video, that is the best camera you've got um, at that moment. Um, so we, um, I think we are faced with, a, with an era now in, in the world where employees are asking us to start producing online content. Um, and the difference with producing content and a video conference is that most of the time the content can be repurposed. It can be distributed and viewed um, at any time uh, at the the client's convenience. Um, I think everybody is in the, in the process of scrambling now to try and find the best way. How do we how do we get what we do every day into an online um, content form? Um, and it might be in the form of text. Um, for, for a lot of people, that will suffice. But for instance, like what the work we do in Brand Love, um, we cannot really translate what we do into, into the written word. So the next best thing after the face-to-face -face is then to record stuff um, on, on video and uh, share that with our clients. So um, I think if I can then just share my tips for creating better video on a phone. Um, and it's a little bit more on the technical side now, um, on the equipment side. Um, but I think the most important thing is to take that extra second and just think about what you're doing. Um, don't just jump in. Um, you can go from zero to zero, literally, if you take five minutes extra and, and just look out for a couple of things. Um, so, Jumping in, and if you remember my uh, triangle for success, so uh, we're back to the lens. Um, and I think my, my biggest step for video recording on a smartphone is keep your lens clean. The back lens and the front lens. Um, so I, I've already explained, the phones are literally in our hands most of the day. Um, and every time we touch it, it gets dirty, it gets greasy. Um, and as a photographer, any form of grease on a lens is a nightmare. It, it starts blurring the images. You start picking up uh, what we call uh, flare. Um, when light hits the lens, it starts producing very funny um, images because it hits the oil on the, on the, on the glass surface and it, it just breaks down the quality of, of your video. So how do you, how do you clean um, uh, a camera lens or your cell phone um, um, lens? My top tip for you is um, use microfiber cloths. Um, these things are truly a miracle of the 20th century. Um, I love them. I carry three, four of them um, in my camera bags with me all the time. They right next to me on my desk. Um, they literally everywhere I go. I, um, so, and I actually, I'm going to just stop the screen share if I can quickly. Um, okay, so I'm back. Um, so I actually just want to 
they must write this with you. The, 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 the Michael Fargo troughs, uh, if you keep them out of a dusty environment, they, they stay clean quite long. So the best thing, first of all, put, put your cloth in a plastic bag if you're not using it. Um, you don't want to pick dust up on it because the dust is going to scratch scratch the lens again if you if you try and clean it. Um, so if your your screen and it works just as well to clean your screens, for instance, on your laptops, um, on your uh, the, um, tablets, tablets, iPads, um, phones. If it's really really dirty, get two of these things. And the first one you can wet it under running water. Okay, so you just plain tap water, but you need to you need to really rinse it out. Okay, so you want a, a wet but a very dry cloth. Okay, then you can start with the wet one. You can literally start just polishing um, all the surfaces and and the back where the lens is. Um, just polish it off with the wet one, and then directly after that, just take a dry one and and just rub it down. If, if there's a little bit of moisture left on the device. Okay, that, um, that is actually not my tip. If you go to Apple's uh, website, how to take care of your device screens, this is what I suggest. A very dry, wet cloth as a first wipe down and then a dry one directly afterwards to, to um, get rid of any moisture that might set. If if it's not very dirty, um, you can just use the dry one. Okay, but you don't want one that you use in the kitchen all the time. You want a dedicated one for your phone. Put away in a little bag, take it out when you need it. Clean your phone, put it back in the bag. Okay, because uh, if you pick up dust on the cloth, that dust is going to become like sandpaper when you clean it, and it's going to just damage your lens even further. Okay, um, let's get you back on the, on the presentation. Okay, um, then tip number two. Um, I cannot stress this enough. If you can use the back camera and the back camera is the one that's on the other side of the screen. Um, facing facing away from you. Um, the reason I'm saying that is that the best technology is sitting in those cameras. Um, uh, somebody commented late last year when the iPhone 11 came out that Apple is becoming a camera uh, manufacturer and not a smartphone manufacturer. Um, I think it's true for most um, cell phone producers. They, they're putting literally millions of dollars of um, research and design into getting smartphones to replace cameras. Um, we are sitting with amazing, amazing lenses and amazing camera technology in our phones. But the best of that is sitting at the back. Um, so when we uh, produce content, if you can try and use the back camera. Okay, and it is uh, the back camera is going to create problems for you because you cannot see yourself. I, I do understand that, but there is ways to overcome that as well. But um, just in terms of quality, um, I would and I'm, I'm thumb sucking this now, but just from what I see when I compare images, I would say you're probably getting about 400 percent better quality out of a back camera than on a front camera. Um, so literally use the, the front camera of, of your smartphone when you produce content only if you really have no choice. Um, okay, and that might be that you are producing content on the fly, you're walking with your phone in your hand and you have to produce something then it's very difficult if you don't have somebody to help you it is very difficult to use the back camera and i then you need to use the sort of the selfie the selfie camera um, which is a front one okay but if you have a choice the back one um, is is the best um 
Tip number three, um, and again, if you remember my triangle, uh, the last bit was you need something to support it. Um, and the moment you add some kind of stabilization to the camera that is not moving around and it can stand in a position you want it, then using the, the, the back camera becomes so much easier because it's holding itself in position. Um, so I'll, I'll show you the little tripods that I use in, in, in the accessories uh, part of this presentation. Um, but for now, if you don't have a tripod, um, stabilize the phone with whatever you've got. Use books. Books work, work very well. Um, books can, if you've got like, uh, nice thick books, um, uh, you can really use them like Lego blocks and you can start building like some kind of support structure for your site that will keep it even at an angle because the, the books are usually quite heavy um, and I, if you prop them correctly they will a phone won't won't shift out of position if you use nice big, big books like dictionaries and things like that um, if you don't have books um, wine bottles um, I'm sure everybody's got a lot of empty wine bottles lying around at this, this stage of the COVID virus. Um, so use the wine bottles. It sounds crazy, but you can prop a phone up on, on that very easily. Um, that it leans against it. You can put one behind the phone and two in front. Just remember not to cover the lens. Um, and that will, keep, that will keep your phone stabilized. Um, the next thing, um, and it's very similar um, to what I, I spoke about under the Zoom tips, um, and that's about um, going towards the light. Um, yeah. Light has always been key in photography and um, in, for that matter, videography. So we need light. Um, quick tips is try and record in open shade. Now, open shot is, is, again, it's just a place um, during daylight that does not get direct sunlight, but a fair amount of light. Um, so that, that is super. If you can find a spot um, outside on a, like a veranda or under a canopy of some sort, it's blocking a direct sunlight, but you've got beautiful light just filtering in. Um, that is a, usually very good places to, to record um, content. Um, reflected light. Um, uh, again, white walls on the outside of your house. Um, things like that. You, you, you just need to walk around and, and see what you've got. That's going to give you nice, even soft light. Um, the misconception is always that sunlight is best it's, it's not. Uh, just stay away from direct sunlight. It's, it's really not the best light to, to take photographs in or to do video recording in. Um, remember the windows again. If you've got that beautiful window spot, that is an ideal spot to, to record content from. Um, the beauty is it's already set up for your conference calls. You can literally even go and prop the phone up against the, the laptop screen because the angle should be right in and everything. Um, and if you need to produce content after hours, um, you might need to use external sources. Um, and the external source, again, it, it, it just means you are bringing light to the scene. Um, and it can be a candle, it can be a bed lamp, it can be dedicated lights for, for video recording, um, but it's literally an extra source that you bring in to, to light up the scene for you. Okay, but first choice, open shade, definitely. Um, second choice, sitting in front of that win windows. That's, you saw the, the image of Chantel, that is beautiful light um, that's going to produce great content. Um, step five, um, and 
I, I do stand behind the statement, and it, the statement sounds a little bit crazy. I'm saying that shaky video is okay if sound is good. Um, and just to qualify that, think about it. Um, what I mean by that, and if you are communicating some kind of content to somebody, um, the the voice, the, what people hear is usually the content. Um, the, the, the data that you want to transfer is sitting in the sound. It's not always sitting on the actual video. Um, we might use um, the, the actual picture to demonstrate something or to highlight something, but we can communicate most of the times what we want to communicate with sound. Um, so even if the video quality is not that good, if sound quality is good, people are okay with it. Um, YouTube did research on this and uh, people are happy to look at a very crappy visual if they can hear what's going on. And, and um, I, I totally agree with that. So quick, quick tips for getting better sound out of uh, phones. First thing is put your phone in airplane mode. Okay. Just switch it off completely that it's not getting any signals or anything in. Um, and while you busy recording content, ask the people around you to do the same. Um, there's nothing more irritating than while a video is being recorded and uh, WhatsApp comes in on somebody else's phone and it's producing very high pitched sounds that records usually better than what you're trying to record. So you, you're going to get um, background noise on your phone. So ask everybody in the house, especially if it's a small space to switch their uh, phones on airplane mode, uh, just for the time um, for you to, to actually record what you need to record. Um, second tip, cluttered space is better than empty. Um, and again, that sounds very crazy. Um, what I mean by that is if you find uh, something like a bedroom um, where there's a lot of windows, there's a bed, there's cushions, there's furniture, um, those kind of spaces produce, produce much cleaner sounds than an empty room. So typically we will think empty. The problem with an empty room is we, we're getting echoes. Um, the sound is bouncing off the walls, it's bouncing off the ceiling, it's bouncing off the floor, and that comes back to the mic, and it, it really creates crappy sound. Um, what a cluttered room does with uh, a lot of um, materials and, and cloths and furniture, it, it absorbs the sound. It absorbs the sound that would have echoed back to the mic. So um, one of the famous bloggers um, out there, um, when he does podcasts, when he is not showing visuals, he actually goes and sits in his car, um, the inside of an SUV, um, and especially if it's uh, uh, cloth upholstery and not leather, that is the ideal spot because the car just absorbs all, all uh, reflections of sound. Um, going with uh, number one, Communicate your intention that you are going to record something. You know, let your kids know, let your spouse know, um, ask them to switch off their phones, just stay out of the area for five minutes or 10 minutes. Um, because the worst thing is to record an awesome piece of content and then the last two minutes, somebody talks or walks in on you and it, it sort of just destroys the whole, the whole tag. Um, if you can or have an external mic, um, use it. Uh, the external mics are producing better quality. Um, I've used the, just the normal microphones on the iPhone with very good success. The, the phone microphones are, are very good. They can produce exceptional results if you follow the tips. But if you have an external mic, um, that, that, that will be first price. Um, we're sort of running out of time, so I'm just going to quickly flip through the 
uh, the next uh, one. Um, and that's just uh, to set the recording quality. Um, again, uh, you're going to hear people tell you to use 4K. Um, I don't think it's necessary for what we want to do. 4K is going to eat a lot of data. Um, it's not just taking storage, but the problem is we're sitting on our homes. We need to upload the content to somewhere. And it's just going to chow up your Wi-Fi and your, and your mobile data. So best uh, place in the middle to record for me is uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second. Okay, this is technical stuff, but you can chat to me offline um, if you, if you want to learn a little bit more about this. But uh, 1080p is high definition TV quality. So it's, it's more than enough. Um, uh, I'm going to sort of skip this. This is about composing the frame because we don't have time. Um, I just want to quickly, uh, and I'm actually going to just stop my screen sharing. Okay, I should be back. Um, so we are literally almost out of time. So. Basically, if you can get out of one of these little tripods, um, if you don't have one, try and order one. There's many on the market. Um, um, the little Manfrotto ones are excellent quality um, and they come at a very good price. Um, with that, you will need some kind of clamp that you can actually clamp the phone in. So I can just quickly show you. So these are both from Manfrotto. I do use different ones as well. Now that's an awesome one, Rosaria. Um, brilliant. Uh, cool. Okay, for the people who don't know, so the, the clamps, literally you take your phone and you put it in the clamp and now you've got something that stabilizes your camera and I've got movement they're usually on a ball joint it's like a joint in our shoulder and you can actually move them around and you can start changing angles and things like that okay um so we bang out of time um chantel all right johan i think um it would be fantastic if we can send people the presentation so we'll zip up that pdf um i just want to work through a few questions on the chat um, and then I think, Johan, if uh, we'll check in with the audience, but if, um, if they enjoyed this um, and they want to follow up, we can definitely schedule a follow up. And maybe specifically for people who can't order the equipment right now, it would be really cool to show them the actual alternative. So I'm just going to quickly scan through the questions. The people that have to run, they can uh, feel free to run. But um, Rosaria is um, asking about zoom it's very difficult to look at the lens um mm. you know rather than looking at the people or yourself um i think mm. Rosario, Johan, i can i can feel this and then you can add to that i think it's quite the the thing about our eye is our eye goes to where we are on the screen it's almost an irresistible instinct that our eye goes to where we are on the screen i, I don't want to get like all self-centered but it is a problem so what i've done is I have created, um, you know, little post-it notes. So I put my post-it note where my where my lens is. I also have, um, you know, these stickers. You'll see the little yellow sticker here to remind myself to look where the lens is. So so this is my kind of way just to um, constantly come back. You know, even if I look at the screen or I'm busy working on the screen, I come back to where my lens is so that I can make eye contact. And especially when you are recording training videos, um, do make sure that you can't see the, the front of the screen. You know, Johan has this beautiful way where he um, checks, he demarcates an area on the floor. If you're moving around, um, type it up with masking tape so that you, or painter's tape, so you can't go outside of that area. But when you do training material, this is what I do. I cannot see the screen. I just see the back back lens, and it just makes for a much, much, much better quality um, quality training video. My eyes are always on the on the lens, and I'm talking to the little yellow man in the lens. Um, all right. So okay. if I, can, if I can just add to that. So also, if you if you just go to the speaker view, 
that popped up the big screen of somebody speaking. Uh, that typically just takes you to the middle of your screen because the person is usually in the middle and is, because it's bigger, your eyes are also a little bit higher up. So that automatically looks a little bit more um, uh, natural. So remove the, the, the grid view if you can and go to the, to the speaker view. That the person who speaks pops up on the big screen um, and then it's just a little bit more, more natural. If you then face that person and talk to that person, for instance. Um, X marks the spot, like Chantal mentioned now, that is awesome advice. Put a little sticky tape or a sticker or a post-it note next to your lens. Um, when you're recording content, get somebody to just stand behind the, 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 the recording device. Get the child or your partner to just stand there and then you talk to that person. A little bit off camera, if your eyes are a little bit off, it's not distracting. Um, it is distracting if you if you post another screen or something. But definitely the, the, the post-it notes, it, it sounds like a simple, simple thing, but it does work. Um, and I found the speaker view, for instance, um, really helps because it's just a bigger bigger image than, than uh, that, that you're looking at. All right. And then uh, I think for the, for the gallery view, if you then drag your gallery view to the top of your screen, closest to where your, um, where your camera is, if your eye then drifts to someone else or your eye drifts to yourself, mm -hmm. at least it's, it's really close to your, to your lens. All right. So the next question, um, I think, Lila, you said it's answered, but if you don't have a ring light, I think, again, getting a really sharp bed lamp, any other kind of external light, sh shining it on a white wall, letting the uh, uh, light bounce off onto your face. Um, Johan's got really, really nice tricks, Johan, and maybe for a follow-up workshop, th this could be really cool. If you've got aluminum foil or you've even got white paper, you could use that to just give you extra light. Um, sometimes when Johan does a photo shoot, he just takes a cardboard, covers it with aluminum foil and puts it puts it down down um, in front of us. If you have a look now at um, at uh, I'm I'm literally opening an app on my on my iPad and if I put it underneath my face and it, the room was slightly dark, it would just light up. It would just light up my face. So there's a couple of tricks in your hand. Maybe you can work on a, on another. Uh, no, if I can just that's another big trick. Um, it's almost better to be in the dark than having an over, overhead light on. Um, so switch, switch off the room lights, especially the fluorescent lights or very bright lights from the top because they, they cast this ugly, ugly shadows underneath our eyes and our chin. Um, again, the cameras do compensate quite, quite well. Um, so if you switch off the light, people will still see you, but it's going to immediately take care of shadows and things like that. So that's another, another, another practical thing there. And maybe just around the psychology of this. So, you know, when we sit in meetings, we don't see ourselves. Sometimes I walk into the bathroom, you know, once in a day and I look in the mirror and there's a piece of nuts or spinach in my teeth. And that's the first time I see myself um, during the day. Now with the Zoom conference thing, we see ourselves the whole time, you know? So, so all of a sudden we look at ourselves a lot more than, than, than before. So, uh, I mean, I don't want to sound vain, but, you know, having the right light and actually feeling good about yourself when you're on Zoom, that's important now. Um, you know, I, I had to record a training video with Marily earlier today and I said, give me three minutes because I haven't got makeup on. I usually don't put makeup on unless I'm meeting with people that, you know, want to see a little bit better side of me. Um, but, you know, all of a sudden we're more aware of what we look like because we spend time in front of a camera. All right, then. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Sorry. And there's a few more questions. So I just want to quickly talk about Facebook Live. Rosaria, you specifically asked about Facebook Live. So Facebook Live is a little bit more tricky. 
Um, and I'm more than happy to spend some time with you on a call just very quickly. So Facebook Live has a setting that you need to flip the screen so that your words read correctly. Um, it, is, it is difficult to do that when you're doing Facebook Live from your Facebook app itself. And when you want to broadcast to a page, sometimes it's much better using the Facebook Pages app. So I can show you how that works. The other thing I want to say is if you want to broadcast to Facebook Live, um, we are actually now broadcasting live to our Brand Love Facebook page. You can do that from Zoom, and it's actually a lot easier doing that from, from Zoom. So if you want to have a little bit more info on Facebook Live, I'm happy to jump on a call on a call with you. Um, then the next question is... Uh, uh, tell, um, in that question, um, is how do, you, how do you see yourself when you use the, the back camera? Um, so uh, two tips there is to obviously first set up your, your space, like Chantal said. I would suggest set up the camera and go and check on the back screen what it looks like and get somebody to sit where you would sit, okay? Um, get your child or a dog or a stuffed animal, put it where you would be and mark the space out for you, first of all. So take masking tape and, and mask it, that you know that you, you're not allowed to move outside the certain boundary. Once that is done, just if, if these little um, vanity mirrors, I don't know what you call it, a little mirrors that you use to put up your lipstick and, and stuff. A small mirror, just put a mirror next to the, to stick it to the back of the phone with masking tape or take a big mirror, a uh, bedroom mirror, and just put it behind the camera. So then, then you, are, you can actually talk to yourself and it will look, look so much uh, uh, more, more uh, natural, okay. So just put some, something that will reflect you directly behind the camera that you can see yourself, but predetermine the frame. Set up the frame and decide where you want to be and that doesn't matter what your movement is, that you will still be in the frame. All right, the other thing is if you want to test um, what you kind of what you see on Facebook Live is I'm running Facebook Live on my phone now while we broadcasting the Zoom. So I would suggest just getting another device um, even opening your iPad or your phone and just checking that, that, that you're happy with what it looks like. Um, then, um, yeah, the bed talks are having amazing sound. Uh, it's it's uh, and, and part of that, so when we run webinars, Johan actually takes our boardroom whiteboards and cover it in blankets. Um, and because there's such a lot of soft furnishings in the bedroom, that's why the sound actually sounds so much better in a, in a, in a bedroom. Um, all right, so I've given Johan's email address through on the, on the, on the chat. Um, you know, feel free to, to email him. Um, and he'll and he'll he'll talk you through um, any questions that you might have, um, and then quickly, how do you center a group on Zoom when conferencing a few groups, family and friends? Um, Patrick, I'm not sure that I, I think Patrick uh, is Patrick still on the call. I think I'm not co completely. Patrick, I'm going to unmute you. Maybe you can just ask the question to your hand. Perfect. You. Uh, thanks, Johan. This has been very interesting. Um, so with conferences for work and that, it's often individuals on the conference call. But now with all this family scenarios, families being at home and needing to Zoom in on different things, including uh, church gatherings, and you have a family in a group, um, how do you center it so that, you know, everyone's involved in the conversation and no one's off center? It's, it's, it's difficult enough making sure that you're keeping your eye line to the camera when you're an individual. But um, if you need to have a few people on the call, how do you do that? Um, Johan, I'm, I'm happy to take this one. So um, I think, Patrick, I mean, we've had really, really big groups in the, in the last two weeks. Um, and typically, you should be seeing my gallery view right now. All right, so when I have such a big group of people, 
um, you know, I've put it on gallery view so that I can see everyone. And the more people there is, the smaller the pictures get. Um, and then let's say let's say we're having a let's say we're having a church service, for example. Um, and you know, then agree beforehand. Listen, guys, we're going to be uh, presenting. We're going to be doing a reading. We're going to present for about twenty minutes, and then I would like some feedback from you, or I'm going to open so people can have a discussion. The ground rules is I'm going to mute everyone when you want to talk. Just raise your hand if your video is on. If your video is off, um, just go into the participant view, and you can um, you can raise your hand in the in the in the participant view. So I think just agreeing with people how it's going to work, and then what we did um, with our laughter yoga that we had yesterday and our kids group the previous day, is we actually asked people to rename the um, the screen to the kids' names and the, the, the place that they're from. So that, you know, let's say you've got a family on there, okay? And I'm going to rename my screen quickly. So if we were in a, as a family in a room, let's say we're doing a church service, then, then I'm going to go, all right, so we've got uh, Johan, we've got uh, me, we've got Christian, um, and we've got Stefan uh, and Rosalia. And my, my screen is going to look like this. Now you can say, all right, so the Buota family, or you can say, okay, um, okay, Christian, you know, what's it like being at home? You know, what, what are some of what you're praying for? Or whatever the story is. So I think just using your medium to try and get it as personal as possible. And then like we would do, uh, Marley and I do a women's, um, women in business group on a, on a Tuesday evening at eight o'clock where we all check in and we say, well, I'm Chantal and I'm feeling worried and I'm from Cape Town. Then we would go down the row and say, all right, Rosaria, please check in. Marily, please check in. Pietra, please check in. So I think it's about finding different ways and thinking about, you know, I, 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 we cannot really look at each other. Um, so how do I engage people by saying their name? I'm not sure whether this is helpful for you. No, that's very helpful. I, I think I like those um, suggestions, especially the changing of the names so that you know who, you, um, who else is um, in, in, in view. So thank you very much for that. I also that's didn't know you could raise your hand if you, your video wasn't active. So thank yeah, you. So if you, if you go into the participant view, I'm just going to see whether I could do it right now. I'm not actually seeing. I'm not sure whether it's because I'm the host. Um, no. Let Marley, Marley should be able to. Marley, just uh, stop video and yeah, okay. There's, there's rising hand. There's Ona oh, no, rising hand. So, so Ona and Marley is is raising their hands now, and I see the little, uh, see the little blue hand, and I can say, all right, Marley, yes, okay. So now I can say, Patrick, um, do you want to speak? I unmute you, and then when you're done, I can lower your hand. So I've just lowered your hand. Um, so I think it's about using using the technology, and then the uh, the other thing, Patrick, we use a lot is we would say um, we would say to people have a piece of paper with you or have a post-it note with you, draw on the post-it note how you feel, and hold it uh, hold it up to your hold you see my cameras hold it up to my hold it up to the camera. Um, that's also we can blend the online and offline world. Um, you know, and let people do interactive stuff, especially now that we've got kids around us, you know, it's so much, I, I think uh, the overwhelming uh, influx of emails we've had about a Tuesday session specifically for the children is a mother wrote to me and said, you know what, I'm on Zoom all the time and it's so difficult. Zoom has become an enemy in our house because the kids go, mommy's on Zoom all the time and she's talking to people and the kids said to her, I now understand. And they said, you know, I, I love Zoom, mommy. I want to be on my Zoom meeting every Tuesday with, with the people from Brand Love. Um, and they understand now what it's like to engage with other kids on, on Zoom. So I think it's, it's, you know, we almost have to reinitiate the whole family to understand this medium. And to, you know, we, we our kids are starting, um, our kids are starting uh, school, uh, online school on Tuesday. 
Um, and you know, all of a sudden they're gonna need their own Zoom accounts. We need to open a whole lot of stuff for them. We need to talk to them about safety in this in this online realm. Don't talk to strangers. Like you won't go on the street and talk to a stranger right now. You're not gonna talk to a stranger on Zoom. If they if you, they call you or they go on on your email, you you call us. So all of a sudden we, we have a much bigger um, education role. All right. I think there's a couple of people that are hopping off now that need to go to other meetings. Um, we, we're happy to stay on, you know, you can just unmute yourself and ask Johanna a couple of questions, but for the people that have to duck, let me just formally conclude the meeting. I will mail your hands um, slides. Uh, uh, we will give you a few links to some of the accessories and please feel free to give us feedback. If you want, if you want your hand to do a, another much more practical session in the, in the light of us not being able to order kit right now, if you want your hand to do a much, much more practical thing, show you some of the books, show you some of the, you know, you can use toilet roll, toilet, the inside of the toilet roll holders, since we're now so fixated with toilet paper, um, to build little things, you know, you can even tell your kids to construct a few things for you. That'll be awesome just to keep them busy. All right, so I wanna say thank you, Johan. Um, thank you for the lovely slide back. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. And most of all, thank you for making us brand lovies look so true to ourselves on video. All right, happy uh, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask some questions. Rosaria, is there anything you wanted to still kind of chat about? Thanks, Pietra. Hi. Um, yeah, so good afternoon, first of all, and again, thank you. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk about it now or later, but also like when I do whatever video, I cannot, so even when I did the bad talks, where I first registered the video and then I upload it, it was also mirrored. So like the writing bad talks was not readable, but is there a way to get that mirror off? Um, what did you record it with on your, on your phone? Did this, you yeah, I just did this. Yeah, I just did uh, really like basic, uh, I put this one down. So I was even using my front camera. All right. And what f what phone do you have? iPhone 11. Uh, was that in? Uh, sorry, what, where, where did you record to? So I just recorded a video and then I uploaded it, but there the mirror was on. So my question was, is there also a possibility to put that mirror function off? Oh, no, that is that is very strange. The fine fund should be able to to do that automatically. Um, let me just I just want to. There's definitely not a setting in the settings for that. Let me just I just want to check. I've got an iPhone XS, so it's a slightly older one. Um, I just want to see. So what what I did uh, quite well now is the editing software. Um, no, no, actually, no. So now I see actually that you're right. It did, I'm now double checking. It worked well. I could still see it the other way around, but once uploaded, it did work. Oh, okay. So it did. It is. So it is only in the does. Facebook. In the, only in the Facebook yeah, live, so yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think you what you see is a mirror, but it's going to flip it. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the it did. Probably, Johan, so, so I mean, that's the issue is we see it as a mirror, but it does flip it. Yeah. And Facebook, um, Rosaria, are you, are you recording just on your personal live stream? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to very quickly show you um, where to, where to set that setting because I had to really like study it. Um, and there's also, um, there's also a, um, a way that you can um, make it, make it private. So you can test it first. I'm going to quickly show you. Oh, yeah, just yeah, yeah, right. That one I can see. Uh, so, so if you are if you are on Facebook Live, yeah. okay, you see those little ridiculous pictures at the bottom. You go and you um you touch the um the uh the the thing that looks like a magic wand. Okay. So you touch the thing that looks like a magic wand, and it's gonna do, then it's gonna show you that that view there. So you see the first uh, the yeah oh my god yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then you're looking for the last icon in that row is is like a little tool it looks like a spanner i found it oh my god i would never cross my mind to go under there and then you see that first, you see that first little thing there you just flip yeah. it around okay. and i can go upside down like 
You can exactly. even flip your head down. <laughs> Super. So that's ridiculous. So that's where it's hiding. And that flips it. And that flips oh, wow. it what a saver. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. So I did a few disastrous live streams last week. So I had to study over the weekend. I read articles because my one live stream was like this and my other one was flipped around. And I had like so many people on this one live stream and, and a person said to me, your text is, is, is not right. Flip the screen. And I'm going, I don't know where the, the what? screen. I have no idea where to flip it. <laughs> cool. Anyway. Thank you so much. No, you Oh, you're so welcome. And then again, I think from Zoom, it's just awesome running the live stream from Zoom. So um, yeah. So I would yeah, that's what I'm gonna try. So how do how why didn't you start that one? Uh, the live stream from Zoom. So live stream from Zoom is like when you um when you I'm just gonna uh, so when you when you look at your Zoom panel at the bottom, there's three dots on the right hand side saying more. And when you click that more, it allows you to live stream either to Facebook or to um, or to YouTube, or you can set up an in between thing where it where it live streams to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So that's you probably have a pro. It might be a, that's only on the pro though. Uh, on I the think... pro, option, yes, yes. Yeah, because you probably have a pro account. I'm still having a, the free one, which probably is no time to upgrade it. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I mean, I think it's really, it probably cuts our post-production time by more than an hour. Because if someone now asks me for a recording, I say, please go and watch our Facebook page. Yeah. All of our stuff is live streamed to Facebook, or you can just hop onto our YouTube channel and it's there. So it really does reduce our, um, it does reduce our, uh, our, our uh, production time a lot. Cool. Thank you so much for all those extra tips and advices. Oh, amazing, Rosaria. Thanks for joining us again. And thank you so much for um, promoting us on LinkedIn. I really appreciate that. And, you know, the more people we can continue to teach things, inspire, you know, keep them positive. Um, I think when we're learning, you know, our brain yeah. should be slightly different. Yeah, and we keep growing as a person. And it's like when we are doing it, then we might just as well get more people to benefit. And uh, it's really all we have in those days. So it's like, um, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. And let's see, you Thank know, I'm, you. Keen, I'm keen to do my next bed talk. Uh, let's see if we can, I just love the fish. I love, I love the way you put that fish. <laughs> <your face. laughs> so I'm going to come and visit you. I'm going to come and visit you because I want to meet you in person <laughs> and I want to wear your fish on my head. So <laughs> there is my fish. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything to get a smile in those days we need to keep smiling we need to keep smiling <laughs> all right listen see you on the see you on the next one thank you thank, thank you so much all of you bye bye bye, bye. <laughs> bye.